Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Sour, Libations and Conversation. It's your girl Dom. This is going to be a super fun episode this week because I got my girl Raja with me and Raja was on a previous episode <laughs> <laughs> talking about entering the dating world and things that are happening, things that should be happening, but y'all still ain't got it together. So we're going to move on to something else that scares the living daylights out of us, okay? Yes. We are going to talk about the horror films that have scared the living daylights out of us. Like, seriously. Like, that's that's exactly what it's called. Mm -hmm. So I came up with this idea just on a whim because... <laughs> Raja, were, were, were we at Home Goods where you told me the funny story about seeing Leprechaun growing up and how you were freaked out? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we were. And so I was literally like, oh my God, that is a really good podcast episode. You know how they talk about the, the, the movies that made us? We could talk about the horror films that made us. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like it's that easy, you know? So I was like, can you, can we connect? Let's both talk about like the top three scary movies that have traumatized us that we still think about to this day that we will not rewatch as adults either. So, Absolutely. yeah, I, I, I mean, low key, I don't even have as long as of a list as I thought I would because I'm, I'm into certain types of horror, like mm -hmm. Scream, right? But there are certain weird things that I just, I just can't. But is Scream scary? Is it? It has moments where it's jumpy, but it, it is more comical to me. Mm -hmm. But I just, uh, I enjoy Wes Craven and I enjoy the writing, the cinematography, the cinematography of it, how it was shot. It was still very soothing, though, you know, like there was going to be uh, somebody popping out doing something from somewhere. With a knife um, and a mask. Yes. So I, I feel like they keep, they keep, uh, what are they? They're trying to make like 10 of them. I think that's a stretch. I I, I think that's a stretch. I feel I like. there's only three. Oh, no. Girl, there's like three more. I stopped watching after three. I stopped watching after they started doing the spoofs. I was like. Oh, uh, well, that's a scary movie. So that's Yeah, but I mean, you know, had like pulled from it. I was like. Yes. Okay. Movie. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I like out of the Scream movies, my favorite one is the third one with Scott Foley. Mm. And and then but it's how they tie everything together, how they tie it. But now I'm like, okay, y'all doing too much. Somebody had descended. Now I will say Scream 4 was hella fun. Who was in that? Hayden Panettiere and Julia Roberts niece. What's that girl name? Emma. Don't, don't yes, ask. I think that's Julia Roberts' niece's name. <laughs> that one was really good. That one was good, but after that, it got chaotic. I, I'm, I'm over it. But Sorry. let's get into it. Like, I'm ready? Let's do ready. it. Okay. Well, can I just say something? Also, I'm like, I'm trying to remember, like, because clearly I watched the most horror films in the '90s. So I was like, what '90s horror films like ruined me? But then I looked it up online, and they had Eve's Bayou as a horror film. Under the category, no lie. And I was like, was that a horror film? Oh, and I love Eve's by you. I just recently, because I think they put it on Am Amazon, maybe? Probably. I just, recent, I just recently watched it, and it was so good. It's amazing. It is amazing. And it's, yeah. I, I would, I, there were there were no moments where it's like, mm -hmm. you would even jump. Mm -hmm. Just I'm, I'm going to say this, the ending still messes me up yeah that was that was that was all told up she got a she got a daddy killed got a daddy killed horrible but nope no nah, never mind i'm gonna say that <laughs> i was gonna say but he was creeping and but he shouldn't be killed for that it just and that's not you you that's not you and grown folks business true so that's why i'm like oh my god that that ended just oh and then i'm like See, and I'm gonna be honest. That movie made me not like Megan Good. I felt like she played the role. For the rest of her career. 
Yes, I felt like she played the role too well. And I felt like, like I she did. Real <laughs> so I, I don't know. Like there's some people that that they say play certain roles really well, or if they consistently play certain types of roles, they said that's that's a part of that person's personality in real life. So mm. I feel like I feel like for the most part, I was, like I started to like her watching Harlem. Like it took a show like that for me to kind of let it go. Yeah, but I'm still looking at you crazy. Damn. She ain't that kid no more. Okay. I understand that. She but ain't no better. do we want to talk about it? Because I feel like to a certain extent she should. But I also have a theory about the situation that she's in. Mm. I don't think it's publicity. Mm. Uh, I believe that she was the other woman that homeboy had been texting and communicating with this entire time, and they've been doing something on the low. Because now, I've heard I've heard that from a few people. Um, I just it's it's I knew by the time we would see a photo, yes, both of them are actors, mm -hmm. but they kind of were both in this New York at the same time filming stuff. Think about it from this perspective. Megan Good is a lot of people's crushes and things growing up. True. And now you, you're not this corny dude anymore. And you got access. So it shifts the narrative a little bit. And I, I really feel like that's what it was. That they have been engaging with each other for a while. Mm. And I kept telling my friend, I said, by the time this fully comes out and we finally see pictures of them together i said watch you can pick up on you'll pick up something from a, a photo i said you'll see that they're very comfortable and they're gonna be real comfortable and that's how it's been well she stuck by him she stuck by his his alibi him in court she stuck by him so yeah i, I ain't mad at her i ain't, listen you gotta do what you gotta do uh but but back to these horror films that are real horror films and not yes. just black films that make people feel some kind of way. Uh, real ones. Like The People Under the Stairs. Ruined me. Really? Okay, see, I remember bits and pieces of The People Under the Stairs. Mm -mm. But I don't, I don't, I'm okay. I had mm -hmm. quite The People Under the Stairs to my grandma's house. And okay. so, this particular my 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 paternal grandmother, I I'm convinced that something happened in this house because we all like even the grandkids we talk about it mm -hmm. and we're like do y'all have like random dreams about being in this house or certain portals or certain things exist A so. After we, after we talk about why this scared you, I'm going to hop back and tell you an interesting story now. Uh, but that was the first place where I watched it. And so for some reason, like my grandma's house, probably to this day, I don't want to be alone in my grandma's house. Mm. So I, I get it. I, I definitely connect to that. But please explain why it scared the women daylight savvy. Well, the, the, the most basic reason is because I could... I could relate this to everyday life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you truly could have these this crazy couple who were brother and sister, mm -hmm. I think, and they played like they were together. So that was like, what? And then they would basically collecting people from service people that would come do a job to their house or just people on the street. And they would just stuff them in their basement and feed them scraps of whatever they ate. And so that, that was scary as, as hell to me because I was like, I'm not trick-or-treating. I'm not doing anything because... Somebody somewhere is going to snatch me up, throw me in their basement, and feed me chicken bones. Because what? And they looked horrible. Their skin. Mm -hmm. No, it was it was an awful movie. It was no. So you have you, you so you haven't revisited it as an mm -hmm. adult, right? Okay. One time. That's all I need. Yeah, I. You know what? I would be. I'd be open to watching that, not at nighttime, but I would probably <laughs> watch that. <laughs> I will I would be open to watching it to mm -hmm. see how it makes me feel as an adult. I so you talk about because what do they call it now? Is it is it frogging or there's another word for it because there have been movies 
specifically on Lifetime, uh, where where people figure out that somebody has been living in their house. And so more and more stories coming oh, out um, about this thing, like really, it's called like Froggy. I think it's called Froggy. Not, 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 um, dang, I hate when I go blank. I can't even think of the word. Damn. Sorry, can I curse? I'm like, flogging is something else. I think that's not actually. Flogging, it's, it's, I know, I know the term and it's bothering me. And I feel like whoever watches is going to be like, duh, it's this. And it's not coming to us. But it's people that, like like live in your house without you knowing it. I can't yeah. Remember. Okay. Yeah. It's called frogging. Frogging. What's the frogging. other word when like you kick somebody out and they just don't leave or they sneak into your house? I see a lot of like when I was growing up. A Squatters lot of or not, no, a squatter wouldn't be that. Squatting. Okay. That was uh, more like drug addicts doing that though. Like they was. Nah, it'd be people doing that that got sense. Cause there no, was I mean, when I was growing up, I don't. Oh, I don't okay. yeah, 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 yeah. A little different then. Yeah. Know? But. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, because even when you, uh, because even in Don't Talk About Bruno, homeboy living in the walls. That was, as cute of a kid story as that was, that was low-key kind of creepy. Because he had access to the entire house. The entire house. And they played it, oh, he just wanted to be close to the family, even though they don't really love him. And I was like, but from a, a adult perspective, that's strange as hell. That is, but everybody didn't know. I think it was only Isa, Isa, Isabel. Yeah, like the kid, the kid knew, and then the I think maybe was it the grand, the grandmama? No, the cousin knew because she could hear. She's like, I would hear noises, so okay. I knew he never left. But like, if you explain that story as an adult with that plot, you'd be like, what is this horror film? Yes, yes, so, that that was creepy as hell to me. Like, I'm not even gonna hold you. I was. That was really, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. that made me uncomfortable <laughs> because knowing that that really happens in real life, because like I said, like the stories are coming out more. Like, I think it was one story I heard where how they figured it out, it was something to do with the microwave and food being left in the microwave because probably they heard the family come home mm. and so they ran back into like, whatever crawl space or whatever that was there so yes girl i could oh, i couldn't handle them like that that i wouldn't be happy to see them i know in the movie they played it real cute no oh my god we're so happy to see you no because you've been here the whole time a whole time like decades and where you go to the bathroom and, and, and where'd you wash up when they left the house mm-mm and I can see him maybe having a, a pee bucket back there, but then you think after so long, like something like that, like would come through the walls. Cause like, I remember yes. I, I had a trifling roommate uh, one time when I first got this vibe mm -hmm. and he was so dusty and dirty. Like he never bought a bed or anything. Like he was just sleeping. He had like, I ended up giving him, like a cover, like a blanket, because he was just like sleeping on the floor. And I'm like, dude, I, I get like you, in, at least buy an air mattress, but he worked the best. Yeah. Dude, like, girl, he had this big ass screen TV, video consoles, all irresponsible. Stuff. Just like, like you said, irresponsible. Just he would have my, I'm like, yo, I'm sorry, we don't do dishes and, and plates and stuff in the room here. I don't, I don't do animals, I don't do uh, bugs. So, yeah, no. No. Yeah. So, um, but because he wouldn't like clean all this stuff, like it was a smell coming out. And I don't know what this smell was, but it like, I got that carpet professionally clean, clean. So I, I could not get that stench out. Like laundry? I have no, it was just funky. Like even after he left, it was just funky. Oh, shit. So it's that's horrible. horrible. <laughs> will come out. And even like when you go back to talking about people under the stairs, like after. Yes, the house should have stunk. Yes. Yes. It all should have been bad. It all should. And they had their daughter who was not their daughter. It was their sister. I don't know. It was strange. The whole story was, it was messed up. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. No. Yeah. Okay. Horror. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. For me, the first movie that really scared the living daylights out of me was. Oh, Tales from the Hood. Mm -mm, don't do that. <laughs> Tales from the Hood scared the living daylights out of me. So, you know, it was like Tales from the Crypt. So it was like all these different um, stories that they would tell. So I think it was like four. But it was one mm -hmm. in particular where it was, uh, it was set like on a plantation. And so there was this old painting on the wall, and I guess yes, we, yes. And you remember the, the the they start coming off the painting, the mud yes. dolls. Yeah. And and as a kid, they play with dolls. Like a bar, it, it didn't scare me about my Barbies. It scared me about these. Uh, what scared me the most was these little statue figures, uh, figurines that my mom had that looked like them dolls. Heck no. And I that and then they was eating a man when they attacked him. Right, that, nay, nay, nay. <laughs> oh, no. and, and even how they they would turn and <laughs> look like it freaked me out. Oh, and then even, even the ending where because because they were at that funeral home. Yeah. And then he was like, Oh, the sheets, the sheets, you want your sheets. And so they they open the caskets and it's like all of them in there. And fun fact, Joe Tory wasn't getting in that casket. That's God Tory in there. Wow. Yeah. I could I could see. I know there's like the tale where like you some people won't play dead or they won't play certain things. They feel like it's jinxing themselves or something. Yeah. So he so they had uh him come in and do that. But and then next thing you know, the funeral director, what's his name? Clarence Williams. Scary you know, Williams. Yes, because he, oh, I swear, everything, everything, everything he did. And so um, he turns into the devil and all of that stuff. And I was just so freaked out. Welcome to hell. Like, I just the thought of it, like having to watch it as an, I, that is it's one wonderful. I would never, I have never revisited that film ever again. Because, and it's probably low key, probably corny. Now, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, I'm cool. But the stories they told, I feel like, okay, yeah, they may have sensationalized a bunch of stuff, obviously for theatrical reasons, mm -hmm. but like those stories were really, 90s horror films were so close to home. Mm -hmm. That's what messed me up. And I'm yeah. gonna swing around to my to my second one. Okay. When you mentioned them little people, it brought up that, that little man again. It ruined my childhood. But something about those films, I would go outside and be like, one day I'm just gonna get kidnapped. Or one day, like in my mind, from watching these films, this would be my last day living. Okay, bye, mom. Like that used to be my <laughs> because they were too close to home to me. But and, when well, also, it's like, why were why were we allowed? Like, why did y'all think this was okay? Yes. Like, yes. I watched shows from the hood with my mother, and I'm like, why, why, why? You read the the, the subtitle and all that. What what are you doing? Why? Because it is not human nature. <laughs> like, uh, I to get to my second one, yeah. I was at a birthday party and everybody was playing with like the gifts that the girl had got. And I was just like, yeah, whatever. You know, I didn't really want to play with the gifts because they put a movie on. I'm like, all right, let's watch a movie. It was dark and it was this big room and they had an old house. Like the house where the floor creaked all the time, mm. where you would hear random noises throughout the house. It was old, like the wood made noises. Girl, they put on that damn leprechaun. <laughs> they put on that damn leprechaun. First of all, I didn't know it was a horror film. So I sat right in front. Big old, the box TV, you know, the really big one. Uh -huh. Right in front, like, oh, I'm so excited. Can, aren't you happy? Like, to watch this. And that mother, yeah, on the screen, I I, I died right there. And because I couldn't move, which made it even worse. Oh. I was stuck. Yeah, yeah, you were, this yeah. little... And I was like, do these people really exist? And then that, and what messed me up the worst, I told you that sometime <laughs> later on my block, <laughs> this, this little person uh -huh. moved in. And I was like, oh, fuck, they're real. Because I didn't, I had never seen a little oh, person. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know the difference. 
probably if you did see one some a little it'd have been different yeah you, you, or, no, you probably it. thought it was a kid like because i'm thinking about oh, that yeah like yeah girl no she moved in and she wasn't nice either i was like oh shit leprechauns are real like this is a real thing and like i never brought it to my mom because i was scared she was gonna be like i don't know i just thought i'd get in trouble for like believing in this instead of just like, oh, it's not real. Cause she told me, Roger, that movie's not real, you're fine. And I'm like, mm mm. She lived down the street. This shit is real. Like, girl, <laughs> it did not, it did not help. It didn't, and, and unfortunately, I think the dude she was messing with at the time was like a crackhead. So it was like drugs involved. So she would have like little weird, it was too much. She just, she had a personality, a character I was just not. Mm -mm. I used to always cross the street when I would walk past them. Uh -huh. It just too no, much. I could yeah because I remember uh, my first encounter with a, a small a little person was uh, and he's now he's cool but we went to the same church he was in our puppet ministry with us his name is Charles mm -hmm. and I would just never forget he flicked me with the rubber band like through like popped it and I swear. I had never been hit with a rubber band like that. And it was like extra force. So I was like, you got some like super strength. <laughs> it's really weird. And it made me really uncomfortable and like <laughs> nervous because I was like, what the hell? Like no kid has ever hit me like this. This is so now I was like overthinking things. I was like, oh shit. Like, you know, like, let me not say too much. Right. I'm not trying to be attacked. So I get it. And then I remember watching um, you know, like Leprechaun, Leprechaun in the Hood and stuff. <laughs> and then we watched this movie called uh Goblin. And I remember because the name of the town was Neobog, which is Goblin Spit. <laughs> <laughs> oh creative. Yes, <laughs> so creative, creative. Right. But it's just it's so funny when you think about stuff like that because I, um, yeah, like I never, I knew that that was a costume. Like I, it made sense. Right. Of course. But then it's like it's certain things that just, I can see how as a kid that did blur your reality. It messed me up. I mean, obviously I, <laughs> I love the little, little people now a hundred percent. I have no right. ill feelings, but I think as a child, never seeing that seeing the movie first and then seeing that woman who was not well yeah and she was anybody like, oh i'm messed up uh i don't want to go outside because she you tell your siblings no i told nobody i was so scared <laughs> i told nobody I, told I was the only one that went to the babe to the to the birthday party so nobody none of them went so they think that in my mind nobody could relate and understand <laughs> it's so crazy how the Especially a child's mind, like yeah. you know. <laughs> and we're talking eight. I was like eight years old. Damn. Oh, so, yeah. Eight. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. And oh, then wait, I think okay, I so. Wait a second. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. But what about when you finally? Okay, so how old were you when you saw Friday? Uh well, my mom. So I grew up Muslim, strict. So I only was able to see certain films if my brothers, who are like. 10 plus years older than me whenever they came home. Okay. And then I'd like sneak and watch that stuff. But my mother wasn't letting me watch. Okay. Which is kind of crazy because I, I think about what you said, how your mother let you watch Tales from the Hood. And I'm like, my mom let me watch What's Love Got to Do With Her? And that was not a kid movie. But Ooh, it was not I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Well, I don't think she knew. I mean, she knew, but she ain't know. But anyways, I want to say my mom worked at an elementary school and I went to school with her one day. Okay. And okay. I seen a little person there. And for a minute... I was I was I was a little scared, and she was like, "What's wrong? Like, why are you scared?" And then I had explained everything there, and she like, it was it was like a sad chuckle, like, "Oh, you've <laughs> been holding on to this all these years. You just why missed are, my parents be doing that to us. Like, why are you laughing at me? I'm frightened, okay? But you know, she was cool, and I went and like met the person, gave him a hug, and we were just and after that, I was like, okay, yeah, I can be chill. You, but you conquered your fear. I did, I did, but I was scared at first, girl. I was like, mm -mm. Yeah. but that's an actual uh, phobia that people have. So, like, what you experience because though they would make kind of like a 
a mockery and joke out of it, like on Jerry Springer on in those daytime. Yeah, times. a lot of people really do have that phobia. Yeah. So it's it's all about conquering, but it's certain things I'm just like mm -mm, I ain't got to conquer, which is the snake thing, uh, and and the the, the tarantula thing. Like I really, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like really? I have I have this ongoing fear that a snake will come through the toilet and like bite my butt, like. It is the weirdest thing, but <laughs> because you hear about that, like in Florida, well, they I was say, yeah, I lived in Florida and I think I was actually more scared of putting my feet in shoes if I left them outside because of what <laughs> caught in your shoes, but never the toilet. The toilet uh -huh. didn't, uh -huh. I just be like, it is what it is. You're going to reach up, you're going to grab it, but uh -uh. Uh -uh. ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> and you was, I can't even believe you was leaving your shoes outside but it, it wouldn't even have to be that because like it, let's say they came through the toilet or got in your house through like some sort of piping or something mm. that could still be a thing even in in the house so Florida yeah. no for me I ain't got to go back there I ain't got to live there mm -mm. No. no I can see the visual I can okay when, the more I think about it I can see why the visual would mess you up if like all you saw was like the body of it in your toilet. Like you didn't even see the head. Like you see people finding snakes in their ceilings and stuff. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that would ruin me. But I think, I don't know, because you can hear it sometimes. Well, maybe not. Maybe mm -hmm. if it's at night, you can't hear nothing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know. I guess I have to find out. Mm -mm. I ain't trying to find out. Far away. <laughs> they, they water is nasty in Florida. I just, I am, I just, the last time I even went to Florida, actually, no, it was college. It was the last time I went, but like, what part? I, uh, Miami. But I just remember when we were on a trip there back when I was like in middle school at my church. I can I can taste the water that they yeah. served us at the table, and I'm like, just just give me a bottle of water because this tastes like you like that swamp. <laughs> yeah, that's what it tastes. Yeah, just like swamp <laughs> water. And I'm like, what what is that? Like it it was just too much happening. In Florida, and Florida always has weird things happening, so they can have that. I don't need it. So, um, my yes, second film <laughs> that I that still creeps me out, but I will watch it for the most part is Michael Myers. Hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand. How a man that's walking like one one mile an hour. Right. Yeah, I didn't get that. How was he catching y'all hoes? Why y'all always gotta fall right. down? And why y'all always dying? Right. He has been blown up. He has been stabbed. Head chopped off. Head everything. How is this the same Michael Myers that is Jamie Lee Curtis's sibling? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of and powers he get? How many lives does this man have? And I am tired of it. And it just it just makes me uncomfortable. Like Michael Myers makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. And I don't understand. And like you, you hear the backstory about him, you know, being uh, mentally unstable and unwell, being in like institutions and all these things. And um, but then it's like, okay, so I did go and see the last one because I'm just interested. I went with a group of people. How was it? I didn't see it. It was terrible. Mm. But then it's like it was kind of her fault that he was kind of like messed up. Like it was like a whole thing, and it just didn't make. And I was just like, okay, so I could see why he was coming after you, right. but everybody else, yeah. Did they it's, show the childhood or anything? Like they kind of went into the childhood a little bit. It still wasn't enough detail for me, but I feel like it, I'm just uncomfortable. And then when they was doing that prank uh, where people was like, oh, if Michael Myers was chasing you, how quick could you be able to get him? Yeah. Dog, I don't know. That just made me so uncomfortable. It's kind of real though when you think about it, because we're always like, I'll oh, run him. But when you like trying to panic and you got them keys, uh -huh. you might get God. It's, it's, it's that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. I'm like, I just, it just makes me, you see, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. He never, he never. So the Mike, is it the Mike, Freddie, Jason? They never scared me. I, <laughs> now, Freddie Cooper was, was funny as hell to me. Cause he to me, that was com like comedy. He was always, and I love Wes Craven's New Nightmare. 
Yeah. It was a little chaotic, but I love that. And it was really, it was, it was funny. Yeah, I agree. I've never been nightmare on Elm Street. None of that never scared me. I'm like, okay, yeah. but a leprechaun did. That shit was. Then <laughs> 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 like, so it was, was all of it. And knives as fingers. No, freak you out. Because <laughs> and, and my, I was like, oh, it's fake. That's fake. But for some reason, even though I was scared, because because I didn't know it was coming on nobody. Pre- you have to, even to this day in my life, you have to prepare me. Hey, we're about to do this, or this is about to happen. Now I'm mentally prepared. I'm not scared. I had no idea. And this little little face just appeared and his skin was all jacked up and his smile was up to here. It was just, oh, it was too much. He had little pointy shoes. No. <laughs> I didn't like none of that shit. <laughs> no. Girl, um, girl, that's just so funny. Like, I uh, I, f- I feel like it's just, because I'm not, I, I, I'm going to say I'm not traumatized too, too often. But I think, like, even certain shows, like when we talk about, when we were talking about John of the Majors earlier, I had just, I was very deep into Lovecraft. Oh, and yeah. That episode, like, there was an episode before the 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 little Raggedy Ann dolls, but I forget what they called them. Girl, yeah, those, those, yeah. That was uh, but it was an episode where, like, when Letty and his her sister first moved into that house. Mm-hmm. And it was some spirit or whatever, like at the foot of her bed. That's one of the things that always freaks me out. Like not mm. like having my feet out from my bed, like just in general prior to seeing that. So seeing that, baby, I was watching Lovecraft during the day. I, I was like, no longer nighttime. Y'all not getting me. I'm not about to be uncomfortable going mm. to bed. I don't want to be freaking out, thinking about stuff and let, letting stuff manifest in my dreams. Hell no. I was done after that. Damn, no, that 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 whole series was fantastic to me. It was it, fantastic. It was scary. Yeah. It was. It was scenes I was like, those two sisters or whatever them them back bends and all that, mm-hmm. they they messed me up. They that was jacked up. And then it was like, damn, it's like they fighting demons and racism. Like <laughs> why we gotta fight both? Like <laughs> for real. So it and I just hate that I hate how HBO played them mm-hmm. and did not give them a second season. Um, and like I tell people, I was like, you know, a limited series does not guarantee that it will come back mm-hmm. uh, because like pretty uh, Big Little Lots was not supposed to come back for three seasons. It was only supposed to be that one season. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but I, and I know, we know why it probably did not get picked up. But it, it's it's important for us to see us in certain spaces that we're not used to seeing ourselves in because we love stuff like that's why we love to get out. That's why yeah. we loved us. Like it was a mirror of certain things that legitimately happens like yeah. to us like all the time, and it's like this weird reality. And I, I feel like people think that black people come from some alt universe, and <laughs> it's like, what? Like, yeah, right? Yeah. So I, I, I love that. I, I was listening to the podcast as I was watching um, Lovecraft with I think both one of the girls was a writer on the show. Um, so she was talking about like how things would happen in the writer's room, things that she would fight for, Whoa. certain things that would get pulled or how they switch certain things. So that was really uh, dope to listen to as you're watching it, like oh, and pick apart certain scenes or you could potentially miss something because I met, when they went to the lodge, I missed that the guy, the the like the head lodger, the person, like I guess that was like the sheriff or whatever, yeah, I missed that he was pieced together. Really, I missed that. I missed that his chest was made was, of other people's parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that was sick. Then, it, then it triggered get out for me, girl. That was sick. And oof, oof, at least they put him to sleep and get out. 
Yeah. He's taking body parts alive. And it's Yeah. So <laughs> what's what's your uh third one? I have a toss up because I don't associate like gory with with like scary. To me, mm-hmm. it's just all suspense, right? For mm-hmm. example, I went to go see The Nun, the first one. There were like shock moments, but it didn't like scare me, which okay. is, it, I'm, I'm scared. I can, I can be scared. But then I guess I don't, uh, this was family related since it was insidious. Couldn't sleep for weeks. <sighs> Couldn't sleep. I don't like movies I, I, based on a true story. What? No, I don't want to hear that. Why are these real life events? But okay. I will say this one thing. I'm going to give it to the nun just because when I saw the woman is actually playing that character, I forgot her name. I had it down, but I don't have my stuff. She looks like that character. Just the same way it, that guy kind of looks like. Yes. Uh, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, Pennywise. Yes, Pennywise. The same way he looked like. She looked, and I was like, whoo, that's scary. That I was not. Oh, is it? Uh, it's, what's her name? Sister Irene. Uh, oh no 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 no! I I found it. Yes. And then right. just her, her name is it says Demon Nun. Her name is Bonnie Aarons, and that is scary. That's like Miss Guinness, and what is the name of that movie? Because that one was so good, and it had. <laughs> Which one? This lady, this lady put a curse on this girl. And I think the girl is Sasha Baron Cohen's wife. Oh. Uh, what's her name? Rachel. No. no. She looks like her. It's like a group of white girls and they look the same. Not the Margot Robbie lookalikes. But oh, what's her name? I'm about to tell you the movie because that reminds me. Let me just say, when they look like the character they're playing. It's a whole nother level of scary. Drag time. me to hell. Oh, I don't know. I thought of that too. And I was like, nah, she's not talking about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I never saw the nun, but I have a funny story about, it, it's crazy how you come up with certain ideas. And when I was in undergrad and I was in video production, we, one of the projects that we had, I believe was to, we, we, me and this group, we made a movie character mm-hmm. and it was literally called The Nun. Mm. And I played The Nun and we, Webster is an old, like was ran by nuns back in the day. And it was like a Catholic school, Catholic college. Uh, and so like Webster Hall, like the theater was like the old sanctuary. You could also go up and look out all this different stuff in this other level of it so we came up with this idea to make a horror film about the campus Shit. and we called it the nun and i played the nun and i remember i was like oh my kill line is gonna be go to hell so yeah <laughs> and i could not believe when i saw that i was like yo somebody got a hold to somebody's pro- project and made that movie because I, I i kid you not yeah no, that but was insidious, insidious is triggering for me because I had told a friend about a weird occurrence that I had in my apartment. Um, mm. I live in K-Town. So she said to me, oh my God, maybe you're a traveler. You should watch this movie called Insidious. It didn't even click. It didn't That's even click. Friend, huh? the word insidious and, and and didn't think that it would I never thought about that this could be a scary movie baby no when I tell you no. I went to next the work work the next day and told her I said why would you tell me to watch that why right. would you call me that type of traveler like give me a warning yeah I'm like give me something yeah I was freaked out. I, I've never rewatched that. Girl, no. That red door shit y'all can have it. My sister, like, I don't like that. And I live alone? Nah. I, right, you're like, nah, 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 nah. 
Because the the uh and then that one scene where it was like the little monster thing was like behind. Nope. Girl peeking around corners. Mm. I can't walk down long hallways no more. Mm -mm. In Chicago, I would take the train. Ain't doing that. Mm -mm. Not the subway. Girl, no. They they know what to do. And it's it's terrible that they know how to play off your fears, but like that's another level. I yeah, I I was I was done. And I think they have like another. I'm like, what else the what else? What what more else can y'all do to terrify people? Agreed. I just I can't I can't. I just I don't know. Uh, I mean, they, I'm sure we haven't seen if you choose to see your scariest movie yet. I'm sure it's it's not even made yet. So yeah, I it, it's it's weird because you know paranormal activity made me uncomfortable. Yeah. The very first time uh the because it was no credits. And it was just like like you were watching security footage. It was nothing. Right. So I was like, wait a second, did this? So you're, I was legitimately confused. Yeah. About what was happening. It was no closing. It, I I was I was shook. And as a person that feels things, that sees things from time to time, I'm like, yo, I don't like that. I, I do not like that. I got something about the corner of my eye. Nah. Yo, yeah. if I can share a, 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 a eerie moment with you. So about a year after I moved into my apartment, you know, it's piggyback off of you saying you're seeing stuff, right? So a year after I moved into my apartment, I was in Kara's room. I was fixing up something and I heard her run to where I thought was my bedroom and just like sit in there and play. So I'm like, hey, whatever she's playing. So I go from my room. Her room is right across from the bathroom. So I go from her room. And I, what I see is her smiling in my room. And then I go into the bathroom. So I was like, oh, snap. Let me ask her what she wants to eat. So I'm like, Kara. She goes, yeah. And she comes from the opposite direction. And in that moment, my heart was like, oh, fuck. What's in my house? Because I saw a little, when I went past, I heard that run. And I saw a little girl smiling, a, a big smile in my room. And I was like, huh. And I walked out the bathroom. I walked out the bathroom so scared. I was like, damn, I didn't think I would ever have to do this in my life. I gotta fight. And I'm like inching out. And I like look around the corner and there's nothing freaking there. It's just my desk in the chair. Cause that's all that's there. But when I went by, Kara was right at that desk. I was, I was messed. I had to like put on something funny after that, like get it out of my mind. I was like, you know what? You tripping. You probably stressed out. You tired. You maybe got anxiety. I convinced myself it was everything but a person in my house that was her size smiling at me go past girl uh-uh no yeah that's it mm -mm. that was a year after that i had sage and everything i'm like spirits i know like uh come on because come on, jesus anything <laughs> we gotta go home but look about a year that was my energy Ain't no as we have, yes, yeah. No, I uh, you know, like I I remember it was that same apartment, and I remember I had like a weird dream, but it was um, but I'm not going to say, but if it, I remember telling my coworker Devin, and I was like, the weirdest thing happened to me last night, and I was like, it was like some something almost like pushed me, like from the front and the back in my bed. And I remember telling him that, and he was like, "Were you scared?" I was like, "No, I remember yelling out like Jesus, <laughs> like I was yelling out." Like, yeah. I was like, but it it was like really weird, and uh, and I feel like no, there was another part. So then I remember like whatever it was like the person like it like woke me up, and they said mm -hmm. wake up, and so. He was like, what do you think that meant? I was like, I don't know. I yelled out Jesus. So I mean, maybe I'm not paying attention to something like I should be, or I don't know. But it, that was one of the weird things that happened to me. But I was like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't play with, I don't play with spirits or anything like that. Certain things I just don't. Yeah. Because of uh, my connection to the spiritual realm. I, I don't want to be bringing stuff home. 
And I remember when we were, I was in Vienna in college uh, and our professor had taken us to a funeral home. And a part of this was, you know, to be immersed in that culture, like death is like this celebration type thing. So it's like very similar to how it is in New Orleans, like whatever you want to do, they can do it, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I remember us like being, I guess it had, it, it had like the church pews, but I remember it was like this one coffin that was there. Like, so if you want to sit up, you can sit up, like stuff like that. But even in the photos, yeah. like you saw like little orbs. And I remember feeling something when we were sitting there and I was like, hey, I can't stay up in here much longer. Y'all got somebody in here that ain't right. Right. And they was like, what? I was like, there's something here. He's over here. And I was like this. And I was like, it's like he on my back. Like, he's not like, I got to go. And I remember like, just like quickly moving and getting up out of there. Like it was just, mm-mm. I don't play with stuff like that. Me too. So I, don't play with that. I can't play. I don't want to play with what I can't see on top of that. No. Okay. Or, or is there and not there. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't want to play. So speaking of things not there, but they there. Mm-hmm. So don't. No. Okay, so I don't know where you're going with this. I'm trying to prepare. Saw is my third film because Saw oh, is something that can happen in real life. I forgot about Saw. So the entire, you just never know. Like, I could see somebody easily drugging somebody, and you wake up and you chain to something, and you got to cut your arm off or cut your bite your leg off, or you're going to let this person die. You know, talking about, I don't have time for that. That Ooh. made me uncomfortable. Almost as comfortable as going to a haunted house. And when they have the chainsaws, and you know, they always they always take the chain off, but it still makes yeah. it And they yeah. hit the line with the blade. I always mm-hmm. like all that. I no. like that. And mm-hmm. anytime I see a chainsaw, I'm up. Because I always yeah. think I was like, they're going to get a crazy person working here one day that's just not going to care. Like, well, I got and control you know, of it. I'm going to just... No, it ain't it up. no, I think they're gonna have somebody Ooh, in the that house. would be horrible. A, slaughter, a slaughterhouse that makes me uncomfortable. That's one of my biggest fears outside of the toilet and the snake. Damn. <laughs> did you have did you have like a like a mo- one of the the I don't know, one of the scenes? Was there one scene in particular that stuck out stuck out for you in the saw? Um in the because I've only I've only seen like two of them. But at the beginning, like in the first one, which is pretty much what happens, like the people like wake up and they like are chained and all of that stuff. I don't like. And it's that. a body in the room. Yeah, it is. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, and because I'm like also it's like, how is this man dead and he is still able to kill people? Yeah. Like yeah. It, it it gives you it definitely give gives you trust issues as well because like you you clearly are friends with somebody who's able it just freaks me out and makes me uncomfortable yeah like yeah. i know I, um the, the latest one like my guy was like oh you want no 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 i'm not coming good the the one that ruined me was the scene where the father was mourning i think he was mourning his dead daughter or something like she was hit by a car or something but i was like why is he here and he was in a room, they were in a cold place. And he was like chained up or something like, a, um, sorry, he was not chained up. The woman that had hit his child was chained up and she was naked. Mm-hmm. And they were like pouring like cold water on her. And she was in a room like below zero. And he had an opportunity to save her, but it was between like some tight pipes that were like, if he touched it, it would it was like freeze his skin off. And he attempted at one point and it did pull his skin a little bit. But like watching somebody freeze, to death, I was like, see, that's too much. That's some cold shit. Like you have the opportunity to save somebody, and and yes, she was probably what drunk driving. Probably, I think that's what it was. It was it was a she situation. Was driving, like that. So she yeah. was like irresponsible. So yeah. it's like I'm gonna risk my life to save your life, and you just took something from me, so I can make you feel shitty double time, girl. Mm-hmm. You gotta take this L. Like and she was chained up, like her arms up. I was like, ooh. And and that's the thing is like it just makes me 
I don't like that. And they said, oh, the one with Chris Rock is so good. Well, it could be good from over there. Chris Rock in one? He's in, uh, it's like a different, it's called Spiral uh, that he's in, but it's part of the, the Saw tr- uh, franchise. Is it is it recent, like the past few years? Or uh, I could I could it's on Hulu. Let me let me tell okay, you. I have to look that up. I got Hulu. Yeah. Uh, twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's like oh Samuel Jackson's in it too. Oh. Yeah. So it's like oh, the wow. film stars Chris Rock. Max Magilia or whatever, Mars, uh, Mar- Marisol uh, Nichols and Samuel Jackson follows police efforts to stop a jigsaw copycat killer. And what's it called? I might look. Spiral. I might watch that. Spiral. Yeah, and it's the ninth installment. Oh, so there was one that came out in 2019 too, but I see the one with Chris Rock. Yeah, no, it's just this too much for me. Yeah, I see it. No, I'm gonna save that. I'll be saving. <laughs> well, you no, let me watch a little bit. I can watch that. Listen, you let me know how it goes, and because I will not be watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at you, no, too. No, it, it, it's just too much for me. But I, um, you know what's funny is I, I, I wanted to see, uh, the new Exorcist. And I really wonder with them kids. I've been seeing kid posters, the little the little girls. Yeah, you know the girl. Okay, because you know this based on a true story. How about my my daughter seeing the poster and she's so innocent. She was like, her mommy did not clean her. She's so dirty. And I'm like, oh, you have no idea. I'm so happy you're not scared, first of all. But you have no idea that this is some demon child. Oh Amazing. My gosh. Yeah. I but, just want to see. Yeah, how it is developed versus like the original, like mm. special effects and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the and so that's why I'm kind of intrigued. But when I told uh, when I told my guy about, it, he was like, "I'm not. I don't want to see that." Like, so and I want to know, like for real. I'm like, I wonder if he low key scared. Like, I wonder if the exorcist like scared him as a kid because I really wasn't scared. I think I think what freaks me out about the exorcist is knowing that that too is like real. Like that yeah. happened. And that actually uh that happened one of them happened in St. Louis. What? Yeah. You know what? Somebody told me y'all also not St. Louis, uh Missouri, is it is it uh I have a friend from Alton and it's okay, Alton, I think she's yeah, from Yes, yeah, like go, the ghost town or something. I don't know. I drove through it one time, and I remember talking to somebody. And they were like, "Yeah, that's the ghost town." I'm like, what? "I could, I could, you know, I could see how somebody could say that about parts of of Alton because it, it but it, it kind of because how Alton is kind of set up, it kind of gives you." Like horror film, like it's like these nice, pretty houses. The leaves are falling. It looks really, you know, like really nice, and and the foliage and all that stuff. But I can see how somebody said that. Hold on, especially on the other side of town, it changed a little bit. Yeah, I'm. Oh yeah, I mean, because it could kind of (laughs) ghetto. I didn't. I don't know. They saying that the ghost town is Kaskaskia Cas- is located in Randolph County. What's uh, next to Alton? Uh, well, it depends because we used to we used to uh, spend a lot of time in this part called Carlinville. Mm. Um. Um. Carlinville, Illinois, um, it's like a small town and you, uh, part of Macoupin County. So like Macoupin County was like, I think Springfield, maybe. Also, oh, it's like North. Well, South of Chicago, but North of like Carbondale. Yeah. So Carbondale wasn't part of it, right. but, uh, absolutely. Like I, uh, it was just a small town. 
and my aunt and her kids uh, were like the only like black people. Uh, I remember when my cousin had a black friend that moved there. I'm trying to think of that girl name, but like that was pretty much it. Like if it was black people there, you knew who they belonged. Yeah. Yeah. To. yeah. So yeah, and like everybody knew each other in town. So if you like when my sister and I would come and visit, and let's say somebody else like they had this uh snack shop and they were like oh you must be one of sharon's kids i was like Dang. yeah i'm her niece Dang. it was almost creepy but like when you think about like there were there was nothing like it, i only remember them like i said the one friend what was that i think that girl's name was like plachette or something mm. and yeah very black and they lived in these like like trailer park homes or whatever. I do remember that because we rode our bikes over there one time. But yeah, like at school, they would be like the only black kids, all of that. Like, and if you saw, like I said, if you saw some, it would be a random family. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I, I thank my parents for uh, raising me. Although Chicago was, was quite segregated when I was growing up, probably still is a bit. It probably is. I, I was about to say it's probably still segregated because St. Louis is very still. I know. I know a lot of a lot of brown people moving uh, north, and a lot of a lot of white people moving out. Matter of fact, I want to say the neighborhood behind mine is is becoming more diverse, if you will. So, but you grew up on the south side, right? South side. Yes. So. Yeah, I think that's happening in like a lot of places uh, in my old neighborhood, uh, in that area on the west side, you're seeing pockets of others mm-hmm. come through. Because I was like, what are all these bike lanes? I was like, oh. Oh, bike lanes, <laughs> meters. Like, what? Yeah. The- I've been parking here 20 years. Now I got to pay to park? Yes. No, 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 no. no, no. Yes. No, uh, I, know, I know in this one area, the Central West End, and I'm going to say probably it's always been chaotic to park in the Central West End, but there are like a lot of um, nice homes, shops in between. Like, it's really dope. But yeah, I, I'm like, I remember when you really, you did not. Like, and maybe it was always, and I just never paid attention to it because probably half the time I was going after the time, like a meter could have been off. Mm-hmm. But it's so much meter parking now. I'm like, what is this? It is. It what, is what are they building that you need all this this money? This what? Are you, what's going on? The street. The street's still raggedy. So what are we? What are we doing? Hello, hello. Uh-uh. Sure. No, but I mm-hmm. truly appreciate you coming here and sharing the things that give you nightmares because. Right. <laughs> I, 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 the real things. The, the, I'm like, what you just said to me? I was like, shit, I'm hella uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I got that room, the door open to the second bedroom while I'm looking and I keep looking in there. I was like, yeah, I need to go get my dog. But though she did something the other day and I was like, there's nothing there. Stop growling and look, there's nothing. Girl, I was freaked. They will do oh, that. But I had to keep it calm. So she was like, Will calm down, and I was like, I think you're. I said like, you're hearing things from outside. Mm-hmm. You have to stop. So, I hear that from animals and kids. Little kids will pick up on things you don't even. Yeah. Yeah, I've had eerie moments with Karen. I'd be like, "What the? Is she in my head? Like, <laughs> yeah." Oh my gosh! Well, thank you so much for pulling up and. Oh don't forget y'all we have the st angela's candles we y'all house is stank some of y'all houses stank and y'all <laughs> see <laughs> no. not that house thing well the holidays are approaching everyone the and are approaching, guys and you know this is going to add an extra layer of love and luxury to your mm-hmm. home where people want to come back but you might not let them back in so right. please shop with us at st angeles dot com slash candles and use code Aquarius at checkout for a little surprise. Okay. She's an Aquarius. <laughs> I am and very loud and proud about it. <laughs> so I'll see y'all here next week. Love it.